Hi everybody, so in video 1884 we were looking at what we'd done with the groundbreaking generator and we decided it would work with water and if it would work with water, well what the hey, how about making a rainwater generator where we put the generator in the rainwater pipe. So I knocked up a quick drawing, it was a bit ropey and a bit rough and ready and here is the refined version. So for ease of printing and so that we don't have too much in the way of support, I've split it into six parts and here are the six parts. Now uh, none of this is printed with support. You can see here we've got the magnet rotor, that's the orange one. Then we've got the stator where we're going to run the coil, that's the blue one. The red one is a cap that goes over the stator. The cream is the rotor itself and the sort of earth colour, if we can call it that, and the uh, pink are the actual inserts and if we look inside those inserts you can see that the pink has got a cone coming down it and that's the top section where the cone points into the rotor. So that is the design that I've come up with and of course this is public and of course it's on Tinkercad so if you feel like playing with this just jump over to Tinkercad and pick up that file. I of course have printed them. Now here's the bottom section. This is the right diameter for UK rainwater. If you're in the US or anywhere else and you have a different diameter, well, you have to make an adapter. But that is the right diameter and that's the bottom. This is the actual stator and we're going to wind a coil around there like we've been doing with all of these serpentine coils. And right in the centre you can see an 8 mm bit of bar. That's for the rotor to ride on and the bottom is a thrust bearing. The thrust bearing is 35 on its outside diameter and 20 on its inside diameter and 2.5 mil thick. And I just picked it up from Amazon and the thrust bearing is two flat plates like that with a ring of ball bearings that go in between. And you jam one section in there, that fits in there like that. We wind the coil and then we put the cap on for a little bit of waterproofing. Now if you're worried about waterproofing, fill that with candle wax. Nothing's going to happen. We put the rotor on, we put the turbine section on and then we put the top on like that and the top has a cone to direct all the water into the section of here. So the idea is the water comes in here, flows out and spins just like we saw in 1844. So what I need to do is glue in some magnets and wind a coil. Okay, and that's the coil on. Now clearly we could get more wire on this, but I don't know what I'm doing, so that's how much I'm putting on, and we'll see how that goes. So there's the coil of wire on, and then the cap goes on top. And when the cap's glued on, what we're going to do is feed those wires to a little hole that I just drilled in the bottom section. The bottom section is the one with the notches. So you feed the wires through the little hole, and drop that into the notches. And a spot of hot glue on that finishes that section. The rotor section's really easy. In the little indent in the bottom you put the other half of the thrust bearing, in the centre you put two skater bearings, and around where the dimples are, are eight magnets. And they're uh, three millimetres by uh, ten millimetres, circular magnets done north, south, north, south, they're N35s, and they clearly are going to drop on there. But before you do that you need the rotor head, and you pop the rotor head onto the magnet rotor, and then that drops on there like that. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now before we close it up, what I want to do is just test. We haven't broken anything. So I've done a quick test of the wires to make sure that they actually have a resistance and it's 32 ohms. And of course, the temptation to try it is just huge. So I've got it connected up to the voltmeter and I'm going to blow on it. <sighs> we get anything there? It didn't actually pop up. One point six volts. Really? <laughs> By blowing hard? Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so we're doing a bit of a winner. Now, what I need to do now, obviously, is pop that top piece on. But because this was a prototype, I'm not actually sure where the cone finishes. So I've got an insert piece here that goes on. In the file on Tinkercad, of course, I've adjusted it because I found out what the height was. And remember, the cone feeds straight into here. So we'll put that cone on. And that's it, ready to go! Oh, 
five volts. Oh really? Yeah, that is well, that's cool. cool. Okay, that was a complete and utter aside while we wait for something to print on the dough. But it worked okay, although I have to say, the water experiment was a, <laughs> was a bit of a mess because that water was freezing, which is why I put a hairdryer on it so we could see something. And it, and it kind of worked fine. Now, the files are available on Tinkercad. I've put a link in the description at the bottom. And if you're in Tinkercad and you look for rainwater turbine, those are the files there. And I'm sure folks have better ideas and will play with it a little bit and hopefully improve it because that would actually be a product all in itself. Now, there are obvious improvements. I only put a few hundred turns of thin wire and you can see there's an awful lot more wire you can get in there, remember. Uh, EMF is BLV sine theta, so the length of the wire has a big impact. And wire isn't that expensive. Magnets are expensive. Wire is cheap. So if we bung a whole load of wire in there, we'd be able to push that voltage right up there. But as a prototype, I think it worked really, really well. I hope it's uh, something you would like to play with yourself because it's certainly available and it would, I think, make a pretty reasonable product. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.